Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to tackle one of the new plastic Stargrave Troopers. And these guys came along with the release of the game, funnily enough, Stargrave. And the three plastic boxes, there are Troopers, Mercenaries and Crew, which all work and are essentially interchangeable for that game. I've chosen to stick together a fella using just parts from the Troopers box, but of course you're free to do whatever you like. If the weapons fit better on a different torso, go nuts. They're fully interchangeable, really very cool. Now I've decided I wanted to take something a little bit different, and I've taken a color scheme from the cover of Five Parsecs from Home, because I really like that sort of pale blue look. Ordinarily I would like to be difficult and say, oh no, space shouldn't be blue, but I think this looks too cool to pass up. It's nice and simple, and I will list all of the paints in the description below. So, without any further mucking around, <laughs> let's get started. Now to begin with, I've primed this fella with a spray of the Fang, but you could use, for example, uh, Wolf Grey from the Army Painter. It's going to give you a very similar finish, though slightly lighter. One way or the other though, I do want this fella to have lighter blue armor. This is a little dark compared to what I have in mind. So I've got here some rust gray. And what we're going to do is to overbrush this over pretty much the whole miniature. It's a very similar technique to dry brushing, but I just haven't taken as much paint off my brush really at all. And all we're going to do is start, well, brushing over. <laughs> All of the areas that we want the armor to be that lighter color. Now this is going to make kind of a mess, but don't worry too much about that. We aren't worried about perfection. Those little recesses and what have you, we can fix up later. Now you'll notice going on that it's a little bit streaky, so we're going to have to come back once this layer has dried and give it a second pass, just to make sure that we've got a nice solid light blue. Now after a couple of coats, that's what we've got. You'll see that I've paid a little bit more attention to the actual armor plates. So if I flip them around here, uh, there are a couple of gaps on the back of his leg and under his arms that I'm not too worried about because we're going to paint them a different color. For now though, what we want to do is to highlight his armor. And for this we're going to dry brush it. You might see my uh, gear lurking off to the side here. Let's just put him down for a second and we're going to pop out some Praxity White. Now for this, I'm going to use a little makeup brush. Um, I thoroughly recommend if you're going to be dry brushing a lot, go cruise to Amazon or something, pick yourself up a cheap set of uh, makeup brushes because these have slightly softer bristles um, and you'll get a, a variety of them in a pack which will help do different things basically. This one's got fairly stiff bristles, but they're very soft at the end, which means it's going to be difficult for us to put too much paint on. Ideal when you're dry brushing. So let's get out a little bit here, pop it on some kitchen towel, and really work that into my bristles. And then we'll just flick along the edge of the base, which gives us an idea of what we're going to leave behind on the miniature. So I'm going to pick, first of all, the back edge of his helmet here is a good place to start. I'm going to lightly flick upwards against that edge, and you'll see after a few passes, we get a white edge there. So let's just... Take our time. Now some areas, like on his helmet in particular, you're going to find that you end up with a slightly fuzzy edge, but we're going to fix that up later. What I want to do now is make sure that there is a white edge to all of these armor plates, and not too concerned if I do make any mistakes. So let's cruise around now, and I'm going to come back once I've done all of these highlights. Now after about a minute's worth of work, this is what I've got. But some of those areas, like particularly his helmet, as I mentioned, are a little more fuzzy than I'd like. So I'm just going to go back to some of the uh, rust gray, and I'm going to apply this with a medium layer brush. And we'll just basically <laughs> cover over some of those, those fuzzy areas. And you can leave behind the uh, highlighting that you want. So on this leg panel here, for example, let's get a decent shot of that. I can cruise in and I can flatten out that area, but leave my highlight intact. So I'm going to quickly just bop around now and any areas that are a little fuzzier than I'd like, I'm going to fix that up. Now this can be a really useful method if you've got shaky hands or if you're just not confident in edge highlighting. You can basically cheat. And I use that quite a bit, especially on miniatures like this. 
What I'm going to do now though, this is a little bit lighter than I had in mind, so I'm going to sort of deepen the color a bit. I'm going to use a contrast color here. This is Grift Charger Gray. I want to introduce just a little bit more depth to this color. So what I'm going to do is give this a real good shake, make sure that I've got no uh, cloudy bits on the bottom. And then once that's all shook up, I'm going to get out my size 2 brush. This would be equivalent to a large brush if you still got one of those lurking around. And I'm just going to apply this over those areas, similarly to a wash. So particularly on flat areas, you want to make sure that you're moving your brush in the same direction as much as possible, so that when your brush leaves the surface and that paint collects, it all kind of comes together at one point. So what I'm going to do now, let's paint, oops, let's paint all of the armor plates with some of this Griff Charger Gray. Now you might want to go for a slightly deeper blue. Uh, really I was just looking for something to color that very slightly. So his pack there and the rest of his armor has got a little bit of a sort of a greenish tint to it now that I quite like. I'm going to move on now and I've got here a Vallejo color. This is black gray. If you wanted to stick to Citadel stuff you could use here Corvus Black. But the coverage on this I tend to find is a little better. What I'm going to do now is cruise around all of his undersuit sort of stuff. So it's uniform basically and I'm going to paint this in black gray. Now really very quickly we start to see that evil space empire look coming together. Brilliant. What I'm going to do now is switch down to black and pure black is going to look much darker by comparison now. Now for the same reason as the black gray I am using Vallejo black here uh, but you could use a bed and black if you fancy. It's much of a much. So what I'm going to do now is, well, the black bits. And if I make any mistakes, it's not going to matter too much because I can just go back to my uh, rust gray or, you know, whatever, and just cover over. But take your time. Um, areas like these belt loops, sorry, the belt itself, for example, you could paint it black here, you know, if you want a, a really dark leather. Uh, but I've got a cunning plan for that. So I'm going to stick to some areas that I want to be black. And we'll get a look at that once that's finished. Now at this stage, some of our areas of color are starting to blend together. So I'm using here Rhinox Hide to introduce our dark leather color. What I'm going to do is paint in areas like his gloves. Um, and I'm just going to pick a couple of things like part of his mask here. I'll paint that in like the, the fabric part in the center in brown. Uh, maybe a couple of straps, definitely his belt. We'll paint that in brown. And we're not really adding much color, but we're adding a little bit of warmth to what is at the moment just black and blue. So I'll come back. We'll get a look at this once I've done some of this and sort of see Oh, do I want to do these leg straps or do I want to leave them like they're part of the... Hmm. A conundrum, folks. <laughs> we'll come back and get a look once I'm finished. Now I do think, spinning them around, that that little bit of brown on the back of his legs, yeah, good idea. What I'm going to do now is I've got some lead belcher and I'm just going to pick out a couple of areas that I want to be, you know, sci-fi metallic. Now I'm doing this because I know I am going to highlight them later. Uh, if you don't want to highlight, you know, you want to use another color, just Iron Hand Steel would be the right choice here. Um, do I want to pick out his grenades in this? Again, we'll come back in a sec once I've made my mind up. Now once that's had a chance to dry, we're going to apply non-oil over all of the dark areas, including the silver. So just pop it all over your black gray, the leather areas, pretty much the whole thing. Now on a hot day like this, that's not going to take long to dry, but I do still recommend give it about 20 to 30 minutes to dry thoroughly. You'll see some of our recesses are still not quite finished, but we can paint from here. What I'm going to do is finally the fun part. You can probably see lurking in the background there, Mephiston Red. And I am switching down to a small layer brush for this, which is an oddity for me. But let's get in here now and a couple of the coats Although to be fair, if you're lucky, you might not need two coats for this. So you'll see it's easy to paint one way, but then when you come to the other side, you know, me being right-handed, I do struggle a little bit to get into these corners. So, hey, 
Now it's the left side again. <laughs> so whatever you need to do, go ahead and fill in his goggles with some fist on red. And at the same time, I'm actually going to paint in rather this little gun sight section on the front there. I want to link his helmet and his gun sight together, make them look like they are part of the same piece of equipment. Now I've watered down some Fire Dragon Bright because I want quite a sharp highlight here. What I'm going to do is paint kind of a crescent shape on the underneath, as soon as I find where the end of the brush is, there we go, on the underneath of his goggles, like so. And then we'll get a tiny wee dot of white, and we're going to put that in first of all at the bottom of the glasses. Very gently. And then you can put one up in the corner. Now if you make any mistakes, you can go straight back to your Mephiston Red and cover them up if you need to. And make sure to add a little dab of white to the corner of your gun sight too. What I've got now, this is Storm Vermin Fur. I'm going to use this to highlight some of the undersuit. So if I pick, let's see here, up on the corner of his uh, lapel. No, what is that? The big honking thing that's holding his jacket on. Doesn't matter. We'll call it something later. <laughs> Just a few little lines of Storm Vermin fur will give this a really rubbery sort of texture to it. It doesn't take much. And as this dries, it will darken slightly, so don't worry too much if it looks a little sharp going on. You can put on as much of this as you like, and I am going to use it to help sort of mark the edges of some of these areas of color. And same as always, any mistakes you make, just go back to your black gray. Now following the same procedure, we're going to use Blood Reaver Flesh, and we're going to highlight some of the leather areas. So on his belt, these leg straps, just a little bit of this to define those edges. Now at this stage I'm going to add just a little bit of Dawnstone and what I'm going to do is edge highlight the metallic areas that are black. So on his weapon for example and a little bit of his gas mask which looks like the filter on the front of his face. Now at this stage is purely optional but I'm going to do this because I want a little bit of visual difference between, you know, our two areas of black. Now just a tiny bit of Stormhost Silver to edge the weapon stuff. And like I said, this is an optional stage. You could very easily just leave this with whatever color you started with. Now ordinarily at this stage, I would suggest a matte varnish. But I think with this fella, and indeed this style of miniature, a slight shine is really going to benefit. So instead I'm going to use Munitorum Varnish, which is really more of a satin finish. Now just a quick pointer, on the underside of his arm there, you can see he's got a little uh, bleep bloop, you know, <laughs> digital assistant or whatever. I'm not painting it because we can't see it. Uh, but on your miniatures, of course, you can do that how you'd like. What I'm going to do now is hit him with that varnish, and I'll pop a quick base on him. Might surprise you the base color that I'm going to go for, uh, but my, you know, my space adventures take place on planets, well, like Tatooine. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a sandy base. Let's get a look at that now. Now with those finishing touches applied, our Stargrave Trooper is complete. Now you might be wondering where is the spinny thing, and unfortunately the spinny thing is out of commission until I figure out how to get more natural light into this little space, <laughs> but... We make do, you know, not a problem here. Now this was a lot of fun to do, and I actually, when I went along to the North Star site to go and check out the uh, Trooper box itself, they have a couple of really cool painted examples. Honestly, I wish I'd followed their red and black scheme, but you can go check that out. I'll make sure that's in the link in the description below. Now this was super easy to do, and I think just by swapping the primer color you used, you'd be able to get a very different finish. You know, easy enough as that, you could swap it out for red or brown, whatever you want to do. I've chosen to go with that 5 parsecs look, and I think that looks really cool. Maybe a little bit of gloss varnish on the uh, lenses there would do the job. Anyhow, as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the lovely patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, and Fred. 
Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free. Drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. I am going to go pew pew pew. <laughs> Play for a little while with this dude. You all enjoy the rest of your day.